Konnichiwa. Today we're going to encounter a lot of the structural points in Japanese that we've covered in this course of lessons in action in real situations. And we're going to do that by continuing with the kaidan, the Japanese story that we've been reading over the last few lessons by courtesy of our Japanese partner channel Akasic Tales. And we're going to be covering such a lot of points this time that I'll put up cards for some of the main ones, but I've also made a supporting page on Kawajapa where you can go and look up any of these points and follow them up if you need to do so. And I think it would be a very good idea to follow up anything that you're not absolutely clear about after we go through this story. Now, to remind you where we got to at the end of last week's lesson, our heroine had gone to a drinking party at her senpai's apartment. After she left the party and was walking home at night, she became aware that she'd left her Keitai Denwa, her portable telephone, in senpai's apartment, so she went back pressed the bell, but there was no answer, turned the handle of the door and found that it wasn't locked. So she walked right in. So let's see what happened next. <音声><音声><音声><音声><音声> と思った彼女は電気をつけて先輩を起こそうかと思ったが先輩がかなり酔っていたのを思い出しそっとしておくことにした真っ暗な中で自分の携帯電話を探し出すと忘れ物をしたので取りに戻りましたと一声かけて部
the adjective dark, and we know that when we see an adjective without its i on the end, if it makes a word at all, it will be a noun. We also know that if we see a word that is all kanji, it's almost certainly going to be a noun. So, makura is pitch darkness. Makura de, the de, there is the te form of da or des. So, hea no naka wa, denki ga suite orazu makura de. As for the inside of the room, the lights were off, it was pitch dark. Do yara, senpai wa mo nette shimatarashi. Do yara, in this case means it seems, it appears to be the case, and this is actually working in tandem with the rashi at the end, which also means seems like, appears to be, and we've covered this in a previous lesson as well. So in between this sandwich that gives us the it appears to be the case meaning, it says senpai wa mo nette shimatta. Senpai was already done gone to sleep, done gone to bed. As we know that shimao shimatta gives that done meaning and that's really the best way to put it in English. It sounds a bit rustic in English, but there's nothing else in English which I think gives that sense of shimao, shimatta, chatta quite as well as done. She'd already done gone to bed, it seems. Buyojin dana. Buyojin means literally not using one's heart, but heart here means mind or spirit. Yojin is care or cautiousness. Buyojin is lack of care or lack of cautiousness. But this particular word, buyojin, tends to mean lack of cautiousness in relation to criminal or other hostile activity. So we might say that walking alone in a dangerous place is buyojin, or leaving valuables on display in our car is buyojin. And here, Leaving her door unlocked at night so anybody could just walk in is buyojin. Buyojin da na. Na, as we know, is the particle used for directing a comment at herself. So she's thinking to herself, buyojin da. It's reckless, dangerous behavior. Buyojin da na to amutta kanojo wa. So she who was thinking this, Denki o tsukete, senpai o okoso ka to omotta ka. Alright, so this looks a little bit complicated and we still haven't finished the sentence, but let's just take it bit by bit. First of all, she thought buyojin, unsafe, dangerous behavior. She thought to omotta kanojo. She who thought that, she then thought something else. Denki o tsukete, tsukeru, of course, is the other move version of tsuku, so she thought of switching on the lights. Senpai o okoso, now, as we know that so ending is a volitional ending, okoso ka, she thought about taking the action of awakening senpai, okosu, to wake someone up, okiru. You wake up yourself. Okosu, su endings, as we know, mean other move verbs. So, okosu is to wake someone else up. Okoso ka. So, she's thinking about this action. The ka, as we know from another lesson, marks a question, that's to say a proposition. So, the proposition was taking the action of waking up senpai. And this is what she thought. But, ga, but. Senpai ga kanari yotte ita no o omoidashi. So kanari is another one of those adverbial nouns that can modify a verb or an adjective without the ni or to that's usually needed for a noun to modify a verb or an adjective. So kanari yotte 
to eat that. Your is to be sick or to be drunk. In this case, drunk. Kanari means sufficiently or pretty much or very. So she was pretty drunk. She was in a state of being pretty drunk. Kanari yotte ita no. And no, of course, bundles that statement into a noun box. No, wo omoidashi. Omoidashi is remember. So she remembered the fact, the no, that senpai had been pretty drunk. Omoidasu is remember omoidashi once again, as we discussed last week, is the I stem of omoidasu, remember, and the I stem here is being used like the te form to make this clause a part of a compound sentence. So we have a threefold compound sentence. Now, first of all, we use ga, but as the connector for the first part, and the second part we're using shi, like the te form, as the connector for the third part, and the third part is soto shite oku koto ni shita. Soto is another one of these ad adverbial nouns, meaning softly, gently, or quietly. Soto suru means to do softly, gently, or quietly. It's like shizuka ni suru, which means to do quietly. Soto suru means also to do quietly, but shizuka means more keep quiet. You might say this to a class, shizuka ni, keep quiet. Soto suru is more to do something in a quiet manner. Now, shizuka can be used in that way too, but soto suru means to do something quietly. It can even mean secretly. Shizuka can't mean secretly. Soto can mean secretly. Here it doesn't mean secretly, but it does mean doing something quietly so that someone else won't be aware of you doing it, which is the kind of implication that sotto often tends to have. Sotto shite oku, shite oku, as we know, is to put in place an action. Oku means to place something. Attaching oku to the te form of a verb means putting that action in place and as we know, the textbooks often say it means doing it in advance or doing it in preparation, but actually it means putting the action in place. So she is essentially saying here, do what she has to do, put her action in place quietly. Soto shite oku koto ni shita. Now koto ni suru, as we've also covered in a previous lesson, means decide to do. So this last bit means she decided to put her action quietly into place, literally. So we've got this whole sentence here. Uyojin da na to omotta kanojo wa denki o tsukete senpai o okoso ka to omotta ga senpai ga kanari yotte ita no wo omoidashi Soto shite oku koto ni shita. So, that's dangerous, isn't it? Leaving the door open, she thought. She considered switching the lights on and awakening Senpai, but she remembered that Senpai had been pretty drunk, and so she decided to do what she had to do quietly. Makura no naka de. 自分の携帯電話を探し出すと、in the pitch darkness, 真っ暗の中で自分の携帯電話, her own telephone, 探し出す, 探し出す, 探す, as we know is search, 探し出す is literally search out, so she sought it out, she found it, と
部屋を後にした。So she said something aloud here, but presumably quite quietly, so that she wouldn't wake some pie. She said, I s a r i m o n o forgotten thing を知ったので I did a forgotten thing. I forgot a thing. I left a thing behind. I s a r i m o n o しったので because of that, 取りに戻りました I came back to take it. In order to take it, I returned. と、人と声をかけて、声をかける is to say something to someone, to, to engage them in conversation. Here, 人と声 she just said that single word, she just said that single voice, literally. She just said that. Hair を後にした。So she just said that presumably quietly so that Senpai wouldn't even hear her, but she felt she ought to say something. Hair を後にした。後にする。Literally means to turn it into behind. In other words, put it behind you. In other words, leave. She left the room. Hair を後にした。She made the room, the thing behind her by Leaving it. And that was that for the evening. Well, she got out of that all right, didn't she? It was a bit scary. But we do hear what happened the next day. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. If you want to see the whole of this story, go to our friends at a c a s i c Tales and I'll put the link right below. If you want to follow up any of the points that I've made here, I've got a list of them on a page. Especially for that purpose, and you'll find that in the links below. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below, and I will answer as usual. I'd like to thank my gold Kokeshi patrons, my producer angels who make these videos possible, and all my patrons and supporters on Patreon and everywhere. And I'd like to thank you for attending this lesson. Kore kara mo, yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Class dismissed. <laughs>